yo, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Source, your source for celeb news. Now today we have, hey yo man, we got a big, look, we got a big loss in the culture, man. A big, big loss in the culture. We're going to talk a little bit about that, all right? Uh, we also got, um, uh, look, look, we got some high profile celebs in, uh, in, in uh, Diddy footage, man. We're going to tell you a little bit about that, all right? Um, we got uh, Dame Dash on, on, on Jay-Z and the freak-offs, man, and how he feels about all of that situation. You're like, wait, wait, Jay-Z was in the freak-offs? No, 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 I'm just saying how he, well, Dame hope he ain't. Dame hopes he ain't. We're going we gonna to show you a little bit about that, all right? Charleston White on Celebs not exposing the, the diddler, man. We got um uh, the Texas warrant for Boosie, man. What he had to say about that. We got um Trump suggesting the purge. Uh, Whack 100 on Drake cease and desist and Diddy's last words. Again, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Source. Hey, yo, if this your first time to the channel, man, be sure to hit that like button if you're feeling any part of the content. We definitely appreciate that. That notification bell's waiting for your tap, so go on and give it a tap. And that subscribe button's waiting for your subscription, man. So go on and tell us that to your Check this out, man. We got a big, big, super big loss in the culture, man. And I hate to tell you, man, but, you know, I mean, who else is going to tell you, okay? Um, actually, it's probably already all over the news. Dikembe Mutombo, man, has passed away from uh, brain cancer, man. Terrible, terrible stuff right there, man. That's a good dude right there, man. Like, uh, he had a battle with brain cancer. Okay, and uh, and unfortunately, um, he has lost a battle to brain cancer, and um, uh, our prayers up to his family and friends, man. You know what I'm saying? Not only was he excellent, right? Not only not only was he excellent at basketball, okay, at his job, right? But also, he is just an excellent human being all around, man. And and most people that have met him, right? Most people, because you know, I got family that met him. Most people that have met him state. That they could sense, like, you know what I'm saying, the goodness emanating from this dude, man. Real talk. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, he was a superstar for 18 seasons, okay? Inducted into the into the Hall of Fame for 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 um uh at, at, as the first NBA global ambassador, right? Um, what else we got over here? Uh uh, look, the man was a humanitarian, okay? Now, he he initially came from the Congo, right, to study. Jo um, uh, a medicine at Georgetown University. That's that was his initial intention. Okay, but then he went into um, he went into basketball. All right. Now, uh, as we said, man, uh, humanitarian, like to the T. Okay, or at least to the to the end. All right. Um, he served as a full time advocate and ambassador for making sure those in need have access to health care, economic opportunities. All right. Uh, this is his post NBA career. OK, he wanted to make sure that those living in the Congo and throughout Africa was, was taken care of, man. All right. Part of his mission, he founded the Dikembe Mutombo Foundation in 1997, opened the Biamba Marie Mutombo Hospital in Kinshasa. Right. Um, in, in 2007, uh, it served about 300,000 people in the area up to now. All right. Also serves on the board. He. He served on the board of the National Constitution Center, Special Olympics. Into anybody that deals with like Special Olympics, Special Education, like those people, like like unbelievable. Okay, um, uh, uh, CDC. You like, like that's because you were spare, spare teacher. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm saying like you know what I mean. Like they they have like special ed, like a lot of y'all are, and then they got special ed, like 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 the deeper level of special ed. You follow what I'm saying, man? Um, uh, uh, what you would call it special olympics international cdc foundation a national board um for the for the u.s fund for unicef man also uh what else do we have over here on him man um his dream was to become a doctor and improve health conditions in his community okay and i think a lot of people are able to sense that um wanting to help humble spirit that emanated off of bro you know what i'm saying um, so it's definitely a loss in the culture, and um, I had I it, it, man. Every time I think of it, man, I love that Geico commercial, man. Uh, so, so we got that Geico clip. Not in my house. <laughs> no, no, no. Not today. <laughs> I mean, how happy are folks to save hundreds of dollars with you, Geico? Happy that the campaign with Tumble blocking a shot. <laughs> Get happy. Get Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. That's what I'm talking about, man. Um, uh, Look, I used to love that joint, man. All right? uh, let's see what the news had to say on it. He says he was fighting brain cancer. The native of the Democratic Republic of the Congo played for nearly two decades in the NBA. He was known for his finger-wagging celebration after his many blocked shots. After his retirement... Matumbo became a global ambassador for basketball. I want to bring in Brian Buckmeyer. Uh, Brian, you actually met Dikembe Matumbo. Uh, what's your memory of him? Yeah, so I met Dikembe at a UNICEF event back in 2017, and, and my memory of him was, was just being in awe, uh, looking up at him, and he truly was a light in the room. Uh, many people, as myself, being a child of the 80s and 90s, remember him of that, that finger wag, and, and we <laughs> talked about that. Um, I, I told him, 
I loved his career. I loved everything about him. There's a picture of me. And, and for the record, I want everyone to know, I'm 6'4", okay? I am not small, but he is 7'2". And the thing that I remember most about him is I wanted to learn so much about him, but he made the conversation always about me. He was so impressed that I, I had come from Toronto and I played soccer in college and then I was a public defender. And I think he was such a light in terms of making you feel like the biggest person in the room mm. and being so proud of the accomplishment that we all were doing in that room at a time. And it even looks like he's wagging his finger at you oh, yeah. in that picture. We were, we were doing it together. No, no, no. Uh, always a great memory with the company. Brian Buckmeyer, thank you. All right, man. Look, look, look. Th you know, I love it when um, we see our ce like celebrities and stuff like that, basketball players, um, rap artists, whoever it is, man, that not only have their jobs that they work, right, and make a lot of money in that respect, but then they, they take their fame and they take their wealth and they take their time and their energy and then they dedicate it to something else even bigger than them. You know what I mean? He, this man brought awareness to women's health and also um in country healthcare training okay he was an advocate for that and uh just a great person all around man so prayers up to his uh, family and friends and um and uh and everybody else that was um that that is close to him and that's deeply affected by that loss you know what i'm saying um uh all right, where we at over here, man? I don't even want look. I don't even want to go over to the Diddy news from there. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel, I feel, I feel crazy just you know going there. You're like, why not? Just go there, man. It's part of the news. Okay, that's true. Listen, um, uh, apparently, right? Apparently, it's being stated that um, News Nation reports, right, that one of the attorneys for the new Diddy accuser claims that she was contacted about the potential sale of one of the diddy tapes okay uh now according to academics he he posted that um well the lady did not reveal right she did not reveal who was um in the video with the diddler okay but this is what she mentioned she was asked about it and she mentioned that the person in the video right one of the videos um the person um with puff is someone that's even more high profile than himself and he was involved along with this other high profile person in a very ex explicit video, okay? Uh, you like, so what, so what? So what's wrong with having sex with other people and getting freaky with it? I mean, ain't nothing really wrong with it. I, I, like, I guess, like if you wanna be freaky with folks, then you wanna be freaky with your spouse, you know what I'm saying? Um, but in this case, I don't know, like a lot of these, th th this freaky situation that we're constantly hearing about, I think the issue becomes people that are married right and are involving themselves in these particular types of situations or people that uh have very high positions and are exploiting their can i say position or even exploiting the people under them that feel like they have to do it or even the bigger issue if any of the people involved in these videos are connected to anything linked with trafficking you follow what i'm saying man uh, now, it, um, the lady, the, the, the lawyer has suggested that there are tapes that are circulating around Hollywood. And according to her, she said a person reached out to her to shop a particular video all right um now her name is michelle kidd Ar ariel michelle kidd she's an attorney for the new um diddy accuser and she says she's not gonna say who was in the video the more the person that is more high profile than the diddler i'm like man who the heck is more high profile than the diddler that i could think of you, 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 i could only think of politicians okay she said this is what she said she said quote they already have been tapes leaking around hollywood being shopped around but one particular person contacted me to shop a particular video i'm over here like ain't that like i think i think part of the thing was like people were given the option to purchase the the the, the tape or the video before it circulates out to the public which i could have sworn ain't that like extortion and stuff like that i thought that was like extortion i don't know maybe it's me but i thought you couldn't like threaten a person with you know what i mean like pornographic images of themselves for like money i thought that that was a crime maybe it is and they just ain't 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 getting the folks yet okay um she also said uh i can tell the video was pornographic she said this was in his atlanta home and it does not seem like the person isn't looking into the video uh to me it doesn't seem like the person knows they're being videotaped so she's saying the folks in the video don't seem to know that they're being taped which is horrific all right uh she said um the young lady right that is that 
is filing the claim against the diddler, right? She's alleging that she's been violated, okay? Uh, it happened between um, Combs and, and, of course, the young lady back in 2018. And she said her client did file a police report. She said the client reached out to her. This is what she said. She said, quote, she reached out to me a few weeks ago. She called me and told me about her assault and her escape. She was at a friend's house who had a in, who had industry ties and Diddy decided to come to the house. OK, she said her client eventually learned that Combs was planning on trafficking her sexually once he arrived, which is horrific. She said it led to her being served the drink. She started, this is what she said. She said it led to her being served the drink. She started to feel woozy, Combs uh, uh, sexually, what you might call it, huh? with an inanimate object and then directed another gentleman to sexually violate her while he watched and pleasured himself. You keep hearing the same story. And, and here's, the, here's the kicker. A Michelle Kidd said her client was able to escape running to the street and a neighbor reportedly witnessed the escape. Okay. Um, that's insane stuff right there, man. That's very, very insane. And she filed a police report. See, with all this coming out and the police reports being filed and whatnot, I don't know, like the fact that, I mean, does that mean it's public records? Can you find it? And what if we can't find it? I don't know. I don't know. This, this is getting this is getting crazy. Anyway, um, so everybody is now at the point of trying to figure out, well, who's on the tape? Who's on the tape? Who's getting freaky? And, and not because they want anybody to be arrested. They just want to know who's freaky. You know what I'm saying? Hey, look, you're freaky, right? You, you're freaky in your mind. You, you have all kinds of freaky, dirty, nasty thoughts, sick thoughts, okay? It's just that none of us know about it. This man, though, he was crazy enough to record it. You know what I mean? And, and unfortunately, anybody that dealt with him, they was also recorded. I'm starting to see all kinds of videos. I'm like, oh my gosh, not her. Not her, I like her. You know what I mean? And ain't her father in the industry too? I was like, yo, like, it's crazy what I'm seeing. I don't even want to start mentioning no names, okay? But, I mean, they, like, it was it was crazy. They're talking about threesomes and all, all this other, uh, like, insanity. Although, I mean, people do that. But it's just... I guess what happens is this, because these people are, are, are famous, we're, we're seeing how some of these famous people behave. And it's just, the, the thing about it is this, they do a lot of what regular, like other people do. They do what a lot of non-famous people do. It's just that because they're famous or that they, they act, right? We see their art on display. For some strange reason, we think that they are not as, as freaky and nasty as the rest of us. You know what I mean? You like you better speak for yourself. I'm not speaking for myself, man. I'm pretty. I'm pretty. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty like like <laughs> vanilla with it. You know what I mean? You like what you like? Your women vanilla? Now I'm saying I'm vanilla in in my 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 tastes. Okay. Like I'm very. I don't know if maybe I'm not using the right word. I'm I'm very like. I'm very just no. I'm just. Can I say normal now? I'm just. I'm just straight laced. Okay. Can I put it like that? All right. I, I think I'm pretty straight laced. I haven't done anything crazy. Anyway, look, never mind all that because that's not what you tuned in for. Listen. Um. Uh, oh, 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 Dame Dash. Dame Dash is now saying, he said, I hope, he said, I hope Jay-Z ain't on them freak off tapes. And, and I guess the idea is this. If a person is on the freak off tapes, then there is a high probability that they may have been involved in some form of trafficking of some sort. Because a lot of the freak off stuff seems to have involved people that was trafficked okay and then this becomes part of the problem right uh and so a lot of people have been just throwing names out for, for no apparent reason they ain't never seen jay-z pull his pants down okay only thing we seen with jay-z let me throw, throw this out here okay the only thing that we i'm saying on here on celeb source the only thing we've seen with jay-z right is him performing on stage and the diddler smacking him on the butt. I didn't like that joint. You know what I'm saying? And I don't, I don't think he liked it either. He just seemed to be performing. And then the diddler was like, go ahead, go ahead, and slapped him on the butt. I was like, what the hell's that? You know what I'm saying? Now, I mean, <laughs> yes, I've seen that on football too, but I'm just saying, man, like, you know what I mean? This man was on stage. I found it to be relatively odd. Like, like why you sla slapping him on the, whatchamacallit? I, like, I just would have, you know what I mean? Like, whoo, thank God I ain't no, you know, I'm not a, I'm not an artist. Cause you know what I'm saying? Cause now, cause what's JJ gonna do? Just get into a fist fight with the dude he's performing on stage with? He might could have had a conversation with him after, like, yo, bro, like, you're, like, what was all that about? Or maybe Jay is like, maybe just act like that didn't happen. Okay, y'all know what I'm talking about? Right, maybe I gotta find a clip. 
Nah, I don't even need to find a clip. Jay's probably trying to forget it. Uh, yeah, take a listen to what Dame Dash had to say in terms of um, hoping Jay Z is not in them freak off Take a listen real quick. Watching what's going on with, with Puff, it doesn't feel good. I don't want to see someone that maybe we had like a, a bullshit disagreement where I don't want to see them die or, or be tortured. I'm not going to celebrate the pain of anybody, any human being, even if they deserve it. What do you think about the way they're portraying Jay right now? <laughs> you know, to be honest, I really hope like the things that they're saying are like, they're terrible. Like I'd be like, yo, I, it's hard for me to even think that any of those things can be true. I don't want them to be true. Like, you know, they say they're going to pick him up next year. I don't want to see that man go to jail. As much as he's been to me, you know, unfair toward, uh, or not unfair, the way he'd be fucking with my money. I want to hope that that's the worst that he's been doing. I would never want to hear like, Jay had a freak off party. Like, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? The shit they saying. And I just be wondering why nobody, you don't say nothing about it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's terrible. It would be such another big blow for hip hop. Regardless of what, you know, perception wise, Jay is also a pillar of hip hop. And if anything bad happens to him, then it's really gonna look crazy for hip hop. You know? So I would never wanna think that he lost his soul to that extent. You know, this is someone I grew up with. No matter what, I don't wish no kind. I, if he was doing the crazy shit they're saying, then you know, there's gonna always be something we recourse at some point. But I really hope that shit ain't true, you know? I would hate to think that the people that were in my world really had that degree of a secret. That they were completely different people than, you know, I was trying to empower, you know, like there was a time pause that he inspired. You know, you know, I love his family, I love his mother. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's, it's hard for me to be beefing with people when I know their children or their parents to a certain level. You, you know, you're still cool with the kids. That's why when like, you know, he was supposed to be Jay's, I mean, Jay's probably my son's godfather. I'm like, how does he do that to put his, his godson's father? You know, so there are some levels that I know are dark, but again, I'm just hoping that it's not that dark. Cause then it's gonna have to, I'm gonna have to process that. Look, man, I, I, I felt what he said, man. You know what I mean? He don't wanna, he's, he's like, yo, regardless of all the issue financially that I got with Jay, I don't want to see him. I don't want to see him go down with, with the freak off ship. You know what I mean? I don't want to see that ship go down. You know what I'm saying? And, and look, 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 look. He's like, but my thing is, that, he said it. He said, but why Jay ain't saying nothing? My my thought process is this. Now Dame Dash knows Jay Z. I don't know. Jay I never met Jay Z. Okay, but Dame knows Jay Z. From what we see, what we as like, you know what I mean? Like the people on the outside looking in, right? What we see about Jay Z is, at least what I see. Jay Z's not a talker. He does. He doesn't seem like somebody that loves. To me, I get the sense that he doesn't really even love like the limelight like that. He doesn't seem like he loves the limelight. Although, um, uh, I think when he when, well, I'm not gonna even go there. <laughs> You're like, wow, what happened? No, I'm just saying. I like. I remember when 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 Nas was under um, Jay Z and um, Nas's album was coming out, and then Jay Z was album coming around the same time, and then and then um, Jay seemed like he promoted his way more than Nas. But that's besides the point. I, I don't even know if it's Jay Z that. Who knows? I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't even want to get into all that. What I'm saying is this: Jay Z does not strike me as the type of person that is very, um, very open and 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 out there like that. If he's doing anything. It's very covert and you're probably not gonna see it for a minute, okay? Unless the feds is like, oh wait, 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 hold, like hold that thought. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm hoping, and and what Dame said was was huge. He said that Jay-Z is a pillar in hip hop. Now, he's not my favorite rapper, right? Um, is he in my top five? No, okay? Is Jay-Z in my top seven? No, all right? Is Jay-Z in my top 10? No, all right? fight me okay whatever like like oh he's in my top 10 no, how could he not be in your top 10 our opinions are supposed to match come out of here with that okay to me i don't think he's he's like incredible like that okay i guess there's a lot of rappers that i think are, are way more you know what i mean but, but not, that's besides the point i'm hoping because i do like jay-z for his business acumen i believe i think um i like i like how quiet jay-z is in in terms of how he carries himself and regardless of what people are saying he don't even address it that part i like about him okay i love that 444 album that he dropped i thought that joint was hard and i think that that's what artists should be doing right uh, spitting game 
Okay. And I love the fact that he was like, if you got the opportunity to have dinner with me or 500,000, take the 500 K because all the game that I got spit to you, you can get on a $10 CD. I was like, respect. You know what I mean? So much, much respect to um, Jay-Z. Just because I don't like his TPS reports like that don't mean that the man isn't incredible in his own right, right? Um, but I I'm with Dame Dash. I would hate to see him involved in it. You know what I mean? But if he's involved in, in, in shenanigans, then, you know, hey, look, man, you ain't supposed to be involved in shenanigans. So if you're involved in shenanigans, then you're supposed to technically go down, okay? For the good of, because no one is above the law, okay? Uh, um... Spe speaking of which, now is a, gr a great time, a great time, okay, uh, to to <laughs> to pivot over to your illustrious president, right? As as Miro used to call the man, the ex Cheeto in charge, right? your favorite ex president has suggested a plan for ending crime, and it is a plan that references the plot, right? To the purge, I kid you not, I'm not making this up, man. Take a listen to this insanity. Doubt that the 950 is a misnomer because you can steal whatever you want. You can go way above. But you'd see it originally. You saw kids walk in with calculators. <laughs> they were calculating. They didn't want to go over the $950. They're standing with calculators, adding it up. You know, these are smart, smart people. They're not so stupid, but they have to be taught. Now, if you had one really violent day, like a guy like Mike Kelly put him in charge, Congressman Kelly, put him in charge for one day. Mike, would you say, he's right here. He's a great congressman. Would you say, Mike, that if you were in charge, you would say, oh, please, don't touch them. Don't touch them. Let them rob your store. Let All these stores go out of business, right? They don't pay rent. The, the, the city doesn't have money. The whole, it's a chain of events. It's so bad. One rough hour, and I mean real rough, the word will get out and it will end immediately end immediately this can't be life man this guy can't be human this man cannot be human look now you look look listen listen what he said is insane to me you notice he was mentioning calculators all right because i think there's like a law and i want to say it's in california where i believe it was the governor who stated that you couldn't be arrested unless you snatched uh, unless what you was pilfering or, or stealing or whatever was over a thousand bucks okay so your boy is saying folks are running around with calculators trying to make sure they didn't go over the thousand dollar mark he said they're not that stupid okay then he says they have to be taught then he goes, now, if you have one really violent day, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's essentially saying, like, they got to be taught. And if you have one really violent day, you can teach him, essentially, is what he said. Damn near inciting what? What's, what the hell does that mean? If we have a, they need to be taught, maybe with a really violent day. What the hell is we talking about, bro? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To teach these people a lesson, he he's saying we need a really violent day? I mean, it's... It's almost like he's making it too easy, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> look, look, look. My thing is this. Who hears that and is still like, this guy got solutions? Like, who is coming to that conclusion that this man's solutions are... You, you, are you following what I'm saying? I don't know. Um, let me just throw out here, man. Um, a leader... A leader... A leader of people should focus on building the people and making sure that the people are good. And and uh, uh, when you have a leader that is self-centered, you do not have a good leader, okay? A leader that wants like, <laughs> like, the, bro is great for comedy. He should be a stand-up comic, but I don't want him as a leader. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like I don't think, you know, because the house has already been in shambles. We've seen it, you know what I mean? You know, I think, uh, on, you know, remember when the Joker said, like, some people just want to watch the world burn? You know what I'm saying? Like, I think there are people, and I'm, I ain't going to belabor this because I don't got a script. I think that there are people that because what they got going on is so chaotic, they also, that like, they, it hurts them to see you at peace when they are going through chaos. So what will make them feel better is if they can bring you into their chaos or create chaos for you so that you and them can now be on the same in the same boat. Like there are, there are a lot of people that are like, I'm not going to go down in this ship or I'm not going down unless you're with me. Like they'll feel better if you're enjoying 
the chaos with them. Okay? Are you following what I'm saying? I th he, he strikes me as one of those people. This is why I say the man on fire that likes to crash on your couch. Okay? He's the man on fire that wants to crash on your couch. Um, uh, and look, the man already done incited a, a insurrection against the damn thing. And now he's like... He's, a, he's saying we just need a really violent day. Like, you mean like the one where five people was killed after you suggested to go to the Capitol? <laughs> and then you said you was going to go with him and you ain't even go, bro. You, you, he was hiding. Anyway, my bad. Listen, uh, Charleston White has spoken on um, celebs being involved in what the diddler was involved in, but not saying anything about it. Take a listen to what Charleston White had to say. Why haven't nobody went to the police on Sean? Everybody going to the lawyer, then to the lawsuit, then to the courts. Hint. Why haven't nobody went to the police if he's really done these things? Because everybody was willing participants. It's called dope fiend freaking. They were dope fiends. These are dope fiends. Prince died a dope fiend. Whitney Houston died a dope fiend. Michael Jackson died a super dope fiend. That nigga was dying every night with purple fall, whatever that shit was. That nigga was going to hell and heaven every night, then coming back, jumping in his body, waking up on earth. You know how much dope fiend you gotta be to do that? <laughs> nigga Whitney slid down in water. Nigga and died at the Grammy. Dope fiend, nigga, these dope fiend getting high. Young Miami. I knew when she said she liked to be peed on. Man, that's dope fiend sex. Meaning when the guy pees on you, mm -hmm. pee on you everywhere, you like it? I just like it. You good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Future say he a girl in the ASS till she pee. Dope fiend sex. These dope fiend nigga having fun. I put the money in a drink and she ain't even know it. She know she. Look, man, I don't care what you say. You might not like Charleston White. The man got, he be making a lot of sense though. And that's the craziest part, right? He talk real crazy, real greasy. And, it, and then he talk with a lot of sense when he wants to. So he knows how to flip back and forth both ways. You follow what I'm saying? Uh, this man said what they having is dope fiend sex. Okay? He said, man, ain't no to the point of. <laughs> urination type stuff he said they having dope fiend sex he's essentially letting you know these are people that are heavily addicted to all kinds of substances and because they are addicted to these substances they they start to do strange things i mean i knew it was strange out the gate because you know once you once you have money and then you can buy and I, matter of fact i think it was will smith that said it he was like and I knew it, I already knew it before you even said it. But I, I read it from the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes tells you, like, what can... I, Ecclesiastes is written by King Solomon. King Solomon had, I, I want to say it's approximately, like, maybe a couple of trillions. If you calculated how much money he had, a couple of trillions, I think it was. And he said, what more can the king... What, who can do more than the king? Essentially, he said, there's no amount of money that can really bring me the satisfaction that I feel like I need. There's essentially right there, there is uh how can i put this i think he says it in the uh, ecclesiastes chapter three right he says something along the lines of uh god has made everything beautiful in his time and then he goes he set eternity in the human heart you follow what i'm saying man essentially highlighting the idea that all of us, right? All of us humans. There's like, we tend to long for meaning. We, we long for purpose. We long for true satisfaction. And no matter what we get, there is an emptiness that accompanies it. So you can get a lot of money, but eventually you're going to feel empty. You can get a lot of sex, but eventually you're going to feel empty. You can get a lot of drugs, you're going to crash and you're going to feel empty. It's always the same thing. So there, like we always want something that, that lasts longer, right? We, we have eternity embedded in our souls. We want something that has um, more permanence to it. And nothing that we have can provide that satiation. You follow what I'm saying? Or satisfaction? I think it's satiation or something like that. All I have to say this, okay? A lot of these people are in these drug-fueled frenzies because they are actually looking for something else and they think drugs is going to meet it. And oftentimes, drugs doesn't meet it. Maybe they think drugs are going to heighten their senses while they're doing these other actions, right? And what are they seeking when they seek all this, this, um, this sexual pleasure? They're seeking power, right? And they're also seeking um, the, the dopamine hit that comes from the sex. Because, you know, the, the combination that's released in your brain, the chemicals that are released in your brain is almost akin to, uh, what is it? They say cocaine and heroin, like, combined, right? This is the dopamine hit. 
that folks are chasing when they're when they're when they want the the sexual uh pleasure you follow what i'm saying man and then you couple that with all the drugs and all this other stuff and it's it's, it's insane so a lot of them are, are indulging themselves because there's something else that they're looking for and it, it's always empty and and you know how it's empty because they keep seeking it okay so whatever they got it just wasn't enough well some people are like well you know what Woo, that was a lot you know what I'm saying? I can imagine sis that man the, 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 the beautiful woman, the beautiful woman that I was like, oh, you was in a threesome, not you. Um, with, with bro and bro, oh, come on. Like, like I'm sitting around here thinking in my head, like that might could have been a situation where sis is like, you know what? That was a lot. Maybe I shouldn't, I went overboard with it. I guess some people are there, but I, let me let me get off of that. Cause I don't, I don't wanna, I, I don't have the script. I don't wanna say something crazy. Listen, uh, we told you the other day that Boosie had a warrant. Oh, by the way, Okay, we posted the story two days ago because I didn't drop a video yesterday. Don't ask me why. It, 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 everybody was behaving yesterday. Okay, so when when everybody's behaving, <laughs> I, like I, I did, I, I just didn't want to bore you. How about that? Okay, uh, um, Boosie has. I think he made up with his daughter. I think I meant to. Let me see. Don't I have a don't I have a link? For that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, he made up with his daughter. Matter of fact, let me see if I can find it because I know I found something and I was like, oh, this is beautiful. Ah, here we go. Okay, um, after after his daughter said what she said. He, this is what Boosie posted. I got to post this part. He said, you know, and, and we told you what she said. She was very upset. She was like, yo, why couldn't you just have a side conversation? Why you got to do it on the internet? Okay. Um, Boosie posted back. He said, I never meant to hurt you. Um, uh, 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 love you. Love you. Love you. I never meant to hurt you with a broken heart. Um, then he said, I love you. All right. And then he said, God got us. Okay. Which, um, then he said, we good. This is, these are my babies. And then he posted a picture of that too. Uh, these are beautiful pics, man. Oh, look at these, look at, look at this beautiful black face. So this is what I'm talking about, man. He said, my baby, we all we got. Um, and, and, uh, he said, y'all ain't gonna make me look like a bad father. I love all my kids and I'm a good father. Hey, look, man, it, it always sounds better coming from your kids. You know what I'm saying? Um, he said, what is understood don't need to be said. I'm a great father, et cetera, et cetera. So I think. I mean, every parent has a moment where, you know, they do things that the kids don't like. And uh, and oftentimes, like the parent, I mean, the parent might could be right. The parent, here's the thing with parents, right? It, let me see what my time is looking like. Oh man, look, I'm just running my mouth, damn. Listen, um, oftentimes, you're, oftentimes, not all the times, but oftentimes, parents can be selfish, but parents generally have your best interest in mind, okay? Where people may want to exploit you for your gifts, your talents, your money, and they wanna take advantage of all that, not to say your parents can't do that, but what I'm saying is, generally, parents are looking out for the best interest of their offspring. They want the best for their kids. What parent doesn't want the best for their kids outside of a parent that could potentially be like a jealous one? And those exist. I mean, they're out there. That's that's not to say they're not, you know what I mean? But um, most parents want what, what's in the best interest of their kids. And that's where we get um, somebody like Boosie saying things that a lot of folks are like, yo, like, you know what I mean? Like, why, why did he say that? Cause he, he, you know, he's like, I want grandchildren. I don't want, I don't want grandchildren. I want grandchildren the way that God intended them to be from a, you know, a husband and a wife. You follow me? So, I mean, I don't think what he's asking for is crazy, but her whole his issue was don't do it on the internet. Okay. Um, outside of that, uh, we got some better news for, for, well, not better. We have some other good news for Boosie, right? You're like, nah, we don't even want to hear it. We want the bad news. Hey, cut it out, okay? Man's a human just like you. Why he's entitled to good news just like you are, okay? Uh, all right, listen. Um, remember we told you that th there was a warrant issued for his arrest in Texas over a chauffeur that was unpaid, right? And the, and the payment was supposed to be to the tune of $8,800. Well, he, uh, he was accused of not paying, right? Um, uh, the chauffeur was hired to drive him around during his stay in Texas, okay? Boosie was summoned to appear in a, in a court, right? A Travis County court over the unpaid invoice, right? Um, Boosie clarified the situation. He said the whole thing was just, <laughs> it was just a misunderstanding. He said, my, it's just a misunderstanding, my, right? This is a misunderstanding, okay? Uh, he said the warrant has been cleared and he, he, he has, has confirmed that he settled the debt, all right? This is what he said. He said, my, it was just a misunderstanding. The warrant's been cleared. Did I just say that? I think I did. Uh, so, and he said, I thought I was doing a drop for the use of a Sprinter to take my kids to the water park. I did the drop for the Sprinter business. I also did a drop for his wife's food company. 
but he say he he's uh, close quote he stated right that he later on learned that the business owner set a price with one of his employees but he never knew about that you know what i mean he said, but he paid the restitution. I guess that's kind of like, like, you know how, like, like, cause you know, sometimes Boosie, like he don't, he don't, you know, sometimes, sometimes he ain't always on it with the business thing. You know what I mean? Sometimes he loses stuff. He might could have lost it too. You know what I mean? Like they, somebody could have said the information, could have flew back. He could have lost. You don't remember when he was dancing and the chain slid down his shirt and he lost his chain and he was like, yo, I keep losing my stuff. I keep losing my jewelry. Well, he lost his information too. So, um, so he, he took care of it though. That's the number one thing. And that's the good thing. I'm glad that he took care of that situation. Okay. Uh, where we at over here? Ah, okay, listen. I heard a couple days ago, right, that um, Drake put out a cease and desist on um, Kendrick Lamar's Not Like Us being performed at the Super Bowl. I heard this a couple of days ago. I, a matter of fact, I probably heard it when I told my people. I, I heard this about maybe two, three weeks ago? About two or three weeks. I think it's two weeks ago I heard about it, right? Somebody else said it. But I was like, ah, you know what I'm saying? I ain't really get that from my sources. So whenever I don't get the information from my sources, I don't really like to post it like that. Okay. Um, but but apparently WAC 100 might have heard the same thing I heard. Okay. And he is now speaking on um, the cease and desist from from the Canadian artist. Take a listen real quick. Drake gets served with cease and desist. He digging himself a bigger dish. He looking more like shit. Oh no, what he serve who? He Kendrick Lamar, so he can't perform not like us at the Oh, for, oh no, that's some serious? Where's that? Like? On the top, on the top. He, I think he should though. He said all that stuff about him that's on the national stage though. Hey Ryder, are you, are you, you all available? I think he should. He said about Kendrick too. And told the world that Kendrick's best friend is his wife. Like he came after him. So what, what about like what? Because he didn't stick when Kendrick's did? Is that what you say? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm saying now I'm very biased when it comes to Drake. <laughs> oh, so it's true. That worked. So money wise, all right, the same thing he just said, okay, we're gonna do it anyway. Uh what what would he be looking at? Work on that. <laughs> no, he's trying to get the NFL to restrict Kendrick. Oh, okay, I got you. He's trying to get them to restrict, you know what I'm saying? You think it's gonna hold wax? I don't know. It's Oh no, it's Jay Z got something to do with it, ain't? Eh? Oh, there you have it. I don't know if that could be. Can that be done? I mean, it's his song, and and that's the other thing. What the, what they said in the, in the drunk was real, right? Uh, the Canadian artist was speaking about bro's uh, wife, suggested that his wife was impregnated by his boy. Why well, ain't no cease and desist on that? And and the song is already out, so he can't re he can't perform the song because I mean I. <laughs> Yeah, if I was bro, I wouldn't want it. But but I mean, I didn't do that though. If I didn't do it, I wouldn't want it, and and I would have already contested it from the jump. But what she, I guess he did. He said like I couldn't possibly be involved in any of that stuff. Whatever the case may be, the song is already the biggest song globally. It's just globally, it's the biggest song. Okay, um, so now he doesn't want it performed on the Super Bowl stage. Uh, I don't know. I mean, what you think? Do you think Drake? Do you think? Kendrick Lamar should perform not like us on the Super Bowl stage. Do you think he should he should perform that? I think that's what didn't I read a great comment on that? Somebody had posted a uh, excellent comment. Let me see if I can find a damn comment because it was great. Somebody said like he, he needs to play not like us. He needs to play not like us remix. He needs to play not like us East Coast, not like us West Coast. Like it's got to be all the versions of not like us that could potentially exist. I was like, I felt that. Uh, what's my time looking like? Ooh, all right, look, 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 my bad. I kept you here long enough. I do apologize. Let me go to my shout outs real quick, okay? Um, where we at over here? All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, all right, look. First off, shout out to Miss Lachey. Miss Lachey, hit us with the $10, man. You hit us with the $10, you almost gonna make me cry, girl, but I ain't, I ain't, I ain't gonna cry, Miss Lachey. Uh, beautiful pick, I love your pick. She said, hey, celeb. She said, my grandmother and grandfather were Masons and Eastern Stars. I think the Eastern Stars are like, the female version of the Masons, I want to say, type stuff, but I could be wrong on that. She said, I'm not sure about the Eastern Stars, but when it comes to the Masons, since they aren't part of Christianity, does that mean that my grandfather cursed our family unknowingly because he was? I have so many questions about that. Also, I have several patients of mine um, and clients that are starting to tune into your broadcast. So please keep giving us the real word. I, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate you exposing us to the people that um, that are in your life, like patients and clients. That's it. That's a huge deal because, you know, you make me feel like I got to be super responsible now. 
with what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shea. So here's, here's my thought process, right? I believe that it's in the book of Ephesians chapter one, where it said, um, uh, uh, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Right? So I, I think what happens is my belief is this. I, I, my belief is that when you become a Christian, right? Any, any curse that, that may have been, see the curse, the scriptures teach, right? That the curse of the Lord remains on the house of the wicked. That's what the scripture says. The curse of the Lord remains on the house of the wicked. Who is wicked? Those that rebel or resist God. Those that know what God wants of them. And they're like, nope, F you. I don't want nothing to do with you. There are people that really live that life. They don't say those words, but they live that life to God. Okay. Um, so those people are cursed. People that know of God. No God wants to, to have a relationship with them and they actively resist them, right? So the curse of the Lord remains on them. Now, my my belief is, and, and the scripture says, um, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation, okay? Of those that hate me. That's what he said. So when you resist God, essentially God translates that as if you resist me and you don't want nothing to do with me, then or you treat me lightly, you lightly esteem me. I'm not that important to you. It's almost as if you hate me. Okay. And um, he, he doesn't even say almost as if he says, if you resist him, you hate him. Okay. You resist his son, right? As your Messiah, you hate him. Okay. Now, this is what he said in the scriptures. Go fight with him. Now, the thing about it is this. When uh, he says the other side of that, this is when he was introducing himself to Moses. He said, uh, visiting the iniquities of the father, but children and ch children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. But then he said, um, uh, uh, he said, but showing mercy to thousands of those that love me. OK, so when you love God, right, that means you become connected to him. Right. And you're like, you know, I want to be born again. Right. And you become officially connected to God. OK, I believe that any curse that was on the family line breaks at you. OK, they break at you. Now, you might have some things in your DNA. Right. That cause you to want to, you know, maybe link up with substances and stuff like that. And so I think you got to break that. But I personally believe that all curses, based off of the scriptures that I use in Ephesians and the fact that he said showing mercy to thousands of those that love me. I believe that all curses are broken with those that are connected to God. So it's possible when you become connected to God, any family curse that you have. Right. Becomes broken at you. You are the broken chain of that. Okay. And then you can begin fresh, begin anew. And then of course you got, um, it is the renewing of your mind. So once you are now training the people under you, let, let's say your children, you're training them in the ways of God and you're undoing the, 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 um, the things that were maybe in your DNA. Cause you know, like there's cell memory too. You follow what I'm saying, man. So you're undoing those things and those practices. And so therefore I think any curses would be broken at that point. I'm sorry if I took too long with that response, but you know, sometimes I want to be as thorough as possible. Okay. Um, let me know your thoughts about that. All right. Uh, another comment is what's my time looking like? Yeah. I got to make up for yesterday, man. So don't get mad at me. All right. Um, it's me, your enemy It's me. Your enemy said this, he said, please. Right. Or they they said, please, I hope that you don't mind. What, uh, OK, um, it's me, your enemy. What you got? So I would like to ask if God is a God of order, then why would he be three persons in one? From my understanding, that doesn't make sense. If Jesus is God, then who was he talking? Then who was talking about Jesus from heaven and said, this is my son, the beloved whom I am, who I have approved in Matthew 317. We need to reason on the scripture. I so um, ju it, it just in case. It doesn't make like not just in case, even though scripture may not certain pieces of scripture or certain truths in scripture may not make sense to us. Does not necessarily equate to um, God is not a God of order. It might could just be that we just don't fully understand it and think about it. We're talking about the infinite God who has created the cosmos, galaxies, planets and um, every single detail inside of the planets. Okay. How scorpions operate, how porcupines and how trees grow out of dirt in the whole nine yards, diamonds and how they're formed. All of these little details are created by a God who we can't even fathom how he's, how all the atoms are stuck together and remain together in all of the universe. Right? So it's okay if we don't fully understand them. Now, God has already um, stated from the first chapter of Genesis, let us 
make man in our image. So he has already highlighted the fact that there is a plurality of persons when it comes down to the divine, right? And so because he's highlighted that there is a plurality of persons, you can go through various parts of scripture, right? Genesis 19, the Lord rained fire from the Lord out of heaven. We see that there is one God. He constantly says that he is one God, but we start to see a distinction of persons. There are three distinct persons that we see revealed throughout the course of scripture. In Genesis 19, we see two other persons, Jehovah rained fire from Jehovah out of heaven. Okay. Um, you can go into, I believe it's Psalm 45 or Psalm 110. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemy your footstool. All right. You can go into Jeremiah 23, I think it is, where it says that God's going to send a Messiah and the Messiah is going to be named the Lord, our righteousness or Yahweh, our righteousness. So he already stated, okay. Um, Jesus said that, uh, Isaiah was speaking about him. When he spoke about uh, the I am matter of fact, Jesus stated that he was the I am that was speaking to Moses. OK, and he says uh, no, uh, God has not revealed himself to man at any any time. God, the father. Right. It is the son that reveals the father. OK, and all of that is revealed to us through the Holy Spirit. All right. So um, the person that was talking to Jesus from heaven is the father now. Uh, not to belabor this, but you, you're free to tune off if you want. But if you want to hear what Diddy's last words were, you got to stay tuned. But let me give you this last piece of information. All right. Um, when we talk about the distinction in the, in the, it's called the Godhead, right? Like the Trinity, right? The distinction is the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. So when we talk about these three persons, the Father is is the is like the source or the origin within the Trinity. Right? The one who initiates the plan of salvation. The one who initiates creation. Okay. Um, he is more or less say the authoritative figure in the three distinct persons you have the son who is the submissive person within those three distinct persons he is the incarnation that is god made flesh all right um it is through jesus that god is revealed in a tangible personal way okay and jesus made him um understandable at that point he he still highlights one god but there are three distinct persons and then you have the holy spirit his role is is uh, a little bit more internal his role is a, is is deeper it's more intimate he is the one that applies the work of christ to people all right and to their lives he convicts people of their sin um shows them what is righteous that is christ and also lets them know that judgment awaits if they reject christ so a lot of what the kickback that we see from christianity is really the conviction of the holy spirit upon unbelievers that have this inner sense that resisting christ is problematic okay um uh uh all right let's get let's get right back to it, wrap this bad boy up and finally Oh yeah, this might could be the longest video, okay? Listen, um, Diddy's final words. Did now, you're like, wait, did he die? No, I'm not saying he died, bro. You know what I mean? Not that I know of, but right now it's 423, so you never know what could happen. But we hope that he doesn't die. We hope that the man repents. We hope the man comes to his senses, and we hope the man says, if he is guilty of any of the crimes that um, he's been accused of for the last 20 years, uh, we hope that he would acknowledge it. You know what I mean? But. He said, um, if he could pick what his last words were, this is what his last words would be. Take a very, very close listen. Take a listen. When I die, I want my last words to be. Stop. I did it. <laughs> the diabolical. You see how you see how you see how poetic life is, man. You see how poetic it is. The man said his last, Diddy's last words were, no, 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 I'm not going to say word. He said if he could say what his last words would be, his last words would be, I did it. That is crazy. That's crazy. He said, wait, 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 wait. Didn't, didn't the Canadian say the same thing? Yeah. I think the Canadian said the same thing. Matter of fact, let me go. <laughs> you like wait, why you why you pivoting over to him for? No, he said the same thing, man. He said that he want to be known for well, cause that was the thing when he had posted the. Oh, I gotta look it up, and I don't feel like doing that right now. But I could have sworn he said something. Never mind the Canadian. Listen, this man said if he, could, his last words would be, "I did it." Damn, 
right? Like shot. Like that's just crazy right there. Uh, did what, sir? What you talking about? Whatever they accuse you of. Maybe he wants to be known as the person that did everything that people say. Because what would he be possibly referring to? My, my, my last words would be, I did it. What would he be referring to? You did what? What, what did you do? Okay. Because you've been accused of a lot of things. And you've been accused of a lot of things for, for two decades, bro. So if you've been accused of a lot of uh, a lot of things for the last two decades, your final words is, I did it. This guy was that bold. He was that bold. And I think that um, too much power, too much influence, and uh, when it looks like you're untouchable, I think you can get to the point where you think that you can really, you start flaunting things in people's face. And I think that's what we see, okay? Uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments below on that, man. Ain't that ain't that crazy? That those are his last words. Let me ask you a question. Um, what do you if if you could say what your last words were, or or let's say you had the opportunity to have your final words, what would your final words be? Post that joint in the comments below. Um, I want to know if it's profound. I want to know if it's basic. It could be basic. You like what's your last words? I don't know, man. Um, I don't know. Oh, I know what my last words are gonna be. My last words, man, I, it's going uh, it's going to be the name of it's going to be the name of God, man, Yahweh, right? The sound of breathing, right? Yahweh. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when I take my final breath, and <laughs> I guess when you take your final breath, the final thing that's going to come out your mouth will be the sound of God's name, Yahweh, right? That'll be the sound. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for tuning in to Celeb Source, your source, Celeb News.